professor, physician, epidemiologist. I am Dr. Sri Banerjee. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Sri Banerjee, core faculty for the College of Health Sciences and Public Policy at Walden University. And in this lecture, I will be going over um, an interesting acronym. Um, and that acronym is literally CRAP. Um, the name of the acronym is the CRAP test. And I'm going to, um, because it has um, such a uh, derogatory connotations. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take you through the history of um, where this actually came about. So uh, an individual by the name of Sarah Blakely uh, made the system um, to critically evaluate some of the literature. So um, this is where it originated. Um, uh, I'm going to give you more context and I'm, I'm going to actually take you back to um, the original paper, uh, which is in a digital commons um, as to what the motivation was for creating this acronym. Um, but uh, the idea still remains the same. Um, the challenge for students um, that are beginning to look at research is not the fact that um, there's not really uh, enough information or not enough topics to be thinking about. The problem is that there are too much things to be thinking about. There's too much information. Um, there's too many topics. Um, and so when you're, um, I mean, even, even in topic exploration, when you're looking at some of the references and, and when you're when you're pouring through some of the literature, you want to have some sort of criteria, some sort of tangible, some sort of concrete criteria. And CRAP provides just that. Um, you can look at a, 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 a source and see if it's current. C stands for currency. Um, so for instance, um, in, uh, at Walden, we say five years, that's kind of the the, the magic number, if something was beyond five years, sometimes it may not um, be as relevant. But now, there are so many exceptions to every rule. Um, to that rule, I will have to caution that there are articles that may have been published before then. Um, I've seen articles from the American Journal of Public Health that had been published uh, in 2009 or 2010. There were seminal articles making some bold statements um, and um, after which um, there was policy implementation and changes. So um, a currency is Im important, but um, of course, uh, use your best judgment. Um, relevance, I mean, this is kind of a self-explanatory um, acronym from um, CRAP. Um, is it relevant to your topic? Does it align with your topic? Um, does it makes sense to include within the body of um, your research? Um, or is it just an, another extraneous sort of tangent that may not really need to be discussed at the point? That's another um, good portion. Um, the other part is authority. Um, what is the authority of the source that you're relying on to support the evidence that you're writing. So um, did you get your uh, relevant um, authority from a website that somebody just um, put together uh, yesterday? Um, on, 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 um, on Anybody can build a website. Um, is it from a dot com? Maybe there's vested interest in the type of evidence that um, the person's presenting. Um, so take a look at what the affiliations are. Um, sometimes you'll see in a, in a discussion post, um, there's promotions and uh, phone numbers to certain things that people are interested in. Um, next one, accuracy. Of course, you want your topic to be accurate. Any other, anything else, um, would not apply to um, 
uh, supporting your research. And finally, it has that purpose. Um, so um, out of crap, the P stands for purpose. Um, what is the purpose of your um, of the research article that is being um, uh, evaluated? Uh, does it align with the purpose of what you're investigating? Um, if you're trying to uh, investigate that um, if uh, colonoscopy um, is uh, just as good as uh, fecal occult blood test, um, then you don't want to be studying a or, or um, looking at a research topic on liver cancer. So it's kind of one of those things. Um, you you want to see the relevance and. This is where I oftentimes um, suggest the building of concept, uh, concept maps, because what that does is that then you see the connections. Then if you do find an article and if you do actually discover a new connection, then you can add it to the concept map. But then if you are finding an article that is that has no relevance, like, for instance, I said uh, uh, I was talking about colon cancer, but then I said, you found an article on liver cancer. So then you can't really include that, except I'm going to, uh, 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 let me tell you something. Metastasis is, is something real. So oftentimes this is, I, I wouldn't say often, but this, this may be a site of metastasis. So potentially something that wasn't a purpose um, all of a sudden might be uh, another purpose. But a caution, a uh, tale of caution I want to make is that you cannot, if you find another uh, topic, if you're interested in that, in that topic, you can change that topic and go to there. But you cannot expect to have one purpose and then also incorporate too many additional purposes because then that dilutes your topic that dilutes your research topic. And then you're stuck with the topic that at the end really is not really communicating what you want it to communicate. What you, it's the, the message is not getting across because you have too many things that you're trying to incorporate. So um, take this uh, acronym for whatever you want it to mean. Um, in, in the second phase, I'm gonna explain kind of where it came from. Um, to give you a little bit more um, insight about this. So uh, now in this segment, as, as I uh, promised uh, before, um, I went back into the history of um, where uh, CRAP came from. Um, and the CRAP test um, was uh, developed by um, uh, as I said earlier, um, Sarah Blakesley from California State University. Um, and um, in, in, in this paper, um, um, it's outlined uh, kind of the details of why this was even put together to begin with. Um, and of course, uh, most of these links do not really uh, work because um, they're about they're from about 15 years ago. But um, the, the the acronym caught on, um, and so I, I think it's it's interesting to take a look at where it is. Um, but of course, in this um, original paper, she says that um, uh, sometimes a person just needs an acronym that sticks. Um, take CRAP for instance. CRAP is an acronym that most students don't expect a librarian to be using let alone using to lead a class. Little do they know that librarians can be crude and or rude. Um, so it's the, the, the way um, it's written, it's an interesting read to be uh, taking a look at, but um, the, the author goes um, further into mentioning that, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of, you know, we've read um, in our own libraries, um, evaluation handouts of um, different types of um, literatures, um, or 
uh, found uh, web documents um, in very little time. Um, but the fact of the matter is that there's a similar theme that um, there's warnings and dangers about misinformation and evaluating information properly um, is is quite important. So having a ha having an acronym is, is that that is um, uh, very easy to remember um, and and something that sticks I, I think is a is a is a is a good um, idea. Um, so. Um, and, and coming from somebody who really likes to uh, create acronyms, um, uh, this paper actually goes into talking about um, some of the initial ideas that she had about AAOCC, CCOAA, and COACA. Um, so that's the kind of um, development of this idea. Um, And then she adds um, some additional resources that she actually uses um, in trying to evaluate literature. Um, so this is not to say, of course, um, this is going to be um, the style that will um, allow you to uh, provide um, a detailed sort of um, evaluation of the literature. Um, there's plenty of options um, that have been uh, presented. However, um, this can be, um, in fact, a suitable sort of um, option if you're trying to think of a way to um, evaluate a topic. So I'm going to give a uh, share with you now um, the actual uh, list of um, questions that you can be asking for crap. Um, so there's currency. So the timeliness of the information, that's important. I already uh, went over this. And I'm, I'm going to quickly go over this. I'm not going to uh, belabor any of the points because I've explained this uh, multiple times uh, in places. But uh, currency is when was information published or posted? Has the information been revised or updated? That, this is sometimes important too because when you're using uh, things like... Um, uh, if you're using a website, uh, especially a government website, so for instance, NIH, CDC, all of these things, um, especially during COVID, of course, the, the CDC website uh, changed daily, literally. Um, so when it's happening, it's really important to be uh, emphasizing and providing um, the actual date of um, when you acquired the information. Additionally, you can also provide, um, uh, acquire information on um, uh, and, and any, any sort of, um, additional, um, updates. Um, maybe there was, for instance, um, in my situation, uh, sometimes there was an update in who confirmed, um, and fact-checked some of the, um, some, th some of the journal art, some of the, um, news articles that I published. Um, also, does your topic require current information? Um, will older sources work? Um, some things you need current information or up-to-date information, especially in my line of work, epidemiological work, if you're involved in that, or um, in the type of work, um, uh, of course, health sciences, current up-to-date information is important, um, unless you're looking for historical trends. Um, then in that case, you might want to compare. So the next um, acronym is relevance, the importance of the information that you need. Um, uh, and, and for your needs. So does the information relate to your topic or answer your question? Does it? Um, who's the intended audience? Um, is the information at an appropriate level? Um, is it too juvenile? Is it too elementary? Or is it too advanced for your needs? Um, have you looked at the variety of sources before determining this is the one you'll use? Um, and would you be comfortable citing the source um, in your research approach? Um, so uh, this is uh, the second um, acronym that is really important. Um, then this the third one is authority, the source of the information. Who is the author sponsor? Um, and uh, when you think about news agencies, of course, um, there's political slants um, in any sort of agency. And so who is the author, publisher, source, sponsor? Of course, that is important. Um, for instance, 
Um, uh, many people know, of course, um, uh, uh, Fox News has, um, you know, certain sort of perspectives and, um, of course, um, uh, other uh, different news organizations um, support uh, different political members and parties. And knowing that um, um, assists you in understanding the nature um, of, the, of, of the news um, idea. So um, of course there's dot dot um, dot com dot edu dot gov dot org dot net. These are more reliable. Um, of course dot com is not as reliable <laughs> as the others, um, and this is something that's important. So the last two that's remaining, of course, and I'll wrap this up, is accuracy, um, the reliability, truthfulness and correctness of the content. Um, so the veracity, and, and this is where misinformation comes in because if you don't have the truthful um, information, then this can really lead to um, uh, a worsening of conditions. Um, for instance, and we saw this with COVID, um, initially there was widespread denial of um, the gravity of, of the disease on the gravity of this condition and then of course we found that um, it was causing a, uh, not only a lot of disease but, but a lot of death and so this is what is important to be understanding um, when we're considering accuracy and in, in certain disciplines it's of course more important than others and then finally we have purpose what is the purpose of the information are you trying to inform are you trying to teach? Are you trying to sell? Are you trying to entertain? Are you trying to persuade? Do the author's sponsors make their intentions or purpose clear? Um, is information fact, opinion, um, or, or is it propaganda? Again, we talked about the political slant, understanding, um, potential political slant. Now, um, a, a point to, that, that I would like to make about a potential about news organizations and potential slants just because uh people have personal slants and uh personal perspectives doesn't always mean that this is th that that is what will be used um in presenting information um when when people um provide unbiased sources it's then then uh and and provide multiple sides then th th this th this is something that is possible, um, and then that can be the purpose. So, do the authors sponsors make their intentions clear? Is information fact, uh, opinion, or propaganda? Does the point appear objective and impartial? And are the political, ideological, cultural, religious, institutional, or personal biases? Uh, being reflected through uh, what is being presented. So the, these are uh, CRAP uh, stands for this. Um, and um, I, I think this is, uh, although um, some people may find um, uh, some offense in, in, in the acronym, it's, it's important to note that uh, at the end of the day, you want an acronym that sticks. And this does. So um, I, I urge you to use. Um, I, I have I've presented several um, ways that you can uh, take information and consolidate information by systematically evaluating the literature that is out there in databases. So I've I've shown all of these things. Um, now I'm I'm showing you an additional system where you can take some of these uh, journal articles and see if it's good or if it's bad thank you for listening